In 2022, there was a complete overhaul of the upper ranks of Wagner Group. Active duty Russian military members began inhabiting most of the mercenary company's highest paid positions. But the final bridge between Wagner Group, the private military company, and Wagner Group, the Russian paramilitary, had been gapped. Conversely, to enlarge the lowest ranks of Wagner Group, Yevgeny Prigozhin was either given permission or instructions by Vladimir Putin to begin trawling Russia's prisons for cannon fodder. Prigozhin recruited a large force from Russia's prisons, chock full of characters such as rapists, murderers of every category and classification, drunks and drug addicts, and anyone else willing to serve on the front lines for a chance at freedom. In the beginning of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Wagner Group served small roles, but things quickly changed when by late 2022, Russia's military had produced significant failures and shortcomings as compared to the Kremlin's desires for the war. Wagner Group began being called upon more and more as the war waged on, proving to be more successful than the Russian military, much to the ire and shame of the Russian military commanders who were now being overlooked in favor of Prigozhin's mercenary force. From here, the situation progressed rapidly into a tailspin downfall for Prigozhin. In direct response to their public castigation, Russian military leadership began an active campaign against Wagner forces. They began to limit Wagner Group's ammo supply and placed mines in their paths of possible retreat. When Wagner Group did retreat due to lack of ammo, they ran into Russian minefields where they were shelled by Russian artillery who were attempting to force them back to the front lines. This was causing immense loss of life and low morale in Wagner Group. And in late 2022, it even caused Yevgeny Prigozhin to personally record himself murdering a Wagner Group soldier with a sledgehammer and posting the video online. The man's name was Yevgeny Nuzhin, and he was the victim of some terribly unfortunate circumstances. He was a prisoner in Russia who had been recruited by Wagner Group and found himself out of ammo on the front lines. Many members of Wagner had taken to telegram channels around that time claiming that the Russian military was actively sabotaging them by withholding ammunition. Prigozhin had done so himself. As such, it would seem that Nugent was aware of his circumstances and decided that Wagner Group was doomed and his best chance for survival was surrender. It seems he was also quite upset with Russia and Wagner Group, however, as he immediately volunteered to fight for Ukraine on the front lines. Shortly after he was sent to the front, he was knocked unconscious by an explosion during a firefight and woke up in Wagner Group captivity. The video of his life ends with Evgeny Prigozhin bludgeoning him to death with a sledgehammer for being a deserter. While these events were taking place, the battle for Bakhmut, Ukraine was raging on, and Wagner Group was the one fighting it. Now facing a collapse in partnership with the Russian military, Wagner Group was finding Bakhmut to be an unwinnable meat grinder. Morale across Wagner Group forces in Ukraine was at an all-time low. Then, the straw that broke the camel's back. The Minister of Defense of Russia made an announcement that by July 1st, 2023, all volunteer forces in Ukraine on behalf of Russia, referring to Wagner Group, must sign contracts with the Minister of Defense, bringing them under his command. He also issued an arrest warrant for Yevgeny Prigozhin. The response from Prigozhin and Wagner Group? Mutiny. In a truly well thought out gesture, Yevgeny Prigozhin announced that he and his Wagner Group would march to Moscow, not against Vladimir Putin, but against the Russian military leadership who he was being opposed by. He also hilariously mentioned that this was not an armed coup, but instead a march of justice, as Prigozhin stated. Although the coup was short-lived, it did have notable achievements. In the early morning hours of June 23, 2023, Wagner Group crossed into Russia from Ukraine, shooting down three Russian military helicopters and capturing the Southern Military Command Base at Rostov-on-Don in Russia along the way. Another par for the course failure of the Russian military. But luckily for them, the coup would end as suddenly as it began. Around 24 hours in, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, acting as a go-between for Putin and Prigozhin, brokered a peace between the two. The terms were for Prigozhin and Wagner Group to exit Russia and go to Belarus in exile, which they did indeed do having brokered a ceasefire. The coup had ended, but things were not settled yet. Vladimir Putin took over the televisions of Russia with a state media-run announcement, vowing to punish those responsible for this military coup and grand betrayal. If Prigozhin was smarter, he would have gone into hiding then. Throughout early July 2023, Yevgeny Prigozhin did not remain in Belarus as promised. He made several trips in his private jet between Belarus, St. Petersburg, and Moscow. On July 19, 2023, Prigozhin released a video on the Telegram app thanking Wagner Group for coming to Belarus and stated that Wagner Group would no longer be taking part in the disaster that was taking place in Ukraine. Instead, he offered them work in the coming months on the continent of Africa.
On August 23, 2023, Evgeny Prigozhin's airplane, an Embraer Legacy 600, tail number RA-02795, was shot down by Russian air defense systems on a flight between St. Petersburg and Moscow, over Tver Oblast, Russia. Two months to the day after Wagner Group's military coup, its leader and two of its three founding members were dead. The list of those in the plane were Yevgeny Prigozhin, Dmitry Ukin, Valery Chekolov, Sergei Propustin, Yevgeny Makrayan, Alexander Tomton, and Nikolay Matsuyev, all Wagner Group members. There was also Kristina Raspopa, flight attendant, Rustam Kerimov, co-pilot, and Alexei Lushin, pilot. This was a major victory for Vladimir Putin. Not only did he kill his only legitimate opposition, Yevgeny Prigozhin, he had also killed everyone who had the will or ability to seek retribution for Prigozhin's death. In the wake of Prigozhin's death, there were some members of the Wagner group who threatened to seek retribution for their slain leaders in the form of another march on Moscow. But this never had any real merit for the simple fact that they were mercenaries. Mercenaries don't fight for ideals, they fight for dollars. And the guys signing their checks were dead. Evgeny Prigozhin is arguably Vladimir Putin's most productive oligarch asset, and Putin took him out like a clay pigeon at a skeet shoot. The questions now are, how much of Prigozhin's work for Putin was deleted when he was killed? Who will run Prigozhin's internet research agency, Troll Farm? And who will do Putin's bidding as the leader of Wagner Group? At this point in time, it seems Wagner Group's future hangs in a precarious balance in the wake of its coup and the death of its leaders. Since July 2023, Vladimir Putin has come forward stating that the Kremlin pays all Wagner Group salaries and has done so since the group's inception in 2014. With the veil completely lifted, any form of plausible deniability Putin previously enjoyed by using the group was washed away. And as such, it seems they are just another branch of the Russian military, although one that was just recently getting shelled by the very same Russian military they are now a branch of. They may not be able to trust Russia anytime soon. And so there it is, Yevgeny Prigozhin, a man who was toxic and harmful to the world his entire adulthood. Even in the restaurant business, the man was prone to violence, a theme throughout his entire life. One of the most influential and important men of Russia in the 21st century. A warlord and propagandist who got his beginnings as a thief. Okay. I want to say thank you for viewing. Um, I know I have death stare and I'm, I'm creepily staring at the camera a lot of the video. Uh, it's my first one, just hoping that I can convey important information and get better with the delivery as time goes on. I just want to say thank you again. Uh, please do all the YouTube things like, subscribe, comment, and uh, show this video to people if you think it was worthwhile. I do appreciate it and thank you.